Welcome to the Profitable Nutritionist Podcast, where your host and fellow nutritional therapy practitioner, Andrea Nordling, teaches you how to grow a sustainable, impactful, and consistently profitable health and wellness practice by following her proven formula. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to the Profitable Nutritionist Podcast. You are in for an excellent episode today. Just wanted to commend you for pushing play on this one. You are not going to regret it. In this episode, I actually had a friend of mine and colleague who is a coach and founder of Six Figure Systems to record an episode for you. Her name is Megan Wing. She is a systems and processes savant. <laughs> that is the highest compliment coming from me, by the way, that the best recommendation I could ever give to someone. That is what my organized hyper love for order mind can give is that she is a systems and processes savant. So I wanted to introduce you to my friend, Megan, who recently coached in the Profitable Nutritionist program. And she taught an entire workshop on lead generation, lead generation tracking and the systems behind how she has created and then now teaches people to create a very lucrative six-figure business in just 30 minutes of lead generation per day. And she's going to tell you all about it in this episode. So I'm not going to say any more. Just know that this is a very, very tactical, juicy episode. And I wanted her to teach this rather than me interview her or rather than me try to paraphrase what she does because she is so great at explaining the processes that she uses. They're super simple and why these systems add up and compound to save you a ton of time. Now, this is different than what I do. Another reason I wanted to have Megan come on and teach this to you, I <laughs> I text her and I was like, hey, do you want to record a podcast episode basically detailing the stuff that you taught in this workshop? She's like, I would love to do that. And she said, do you want to do it as an interview? And I said, I actually don't because I feel like you are going to just do such a better job of explaining all of this without me interrupting you, <laughs> which is what we ended up doing. So she recorded this solo and sent it over. Um, And she did an amazing job as I knew she would. But like I said, she does a very different marketing strategy than what I do. She relies very heavily on social media to attract leads to her email list. She engages with people in the DMs, something I do not do whatsoever. But I know many of my clients who want to do this or are doing it and not doing it very well. And so I think that her take on it is going to be really, really very helpful for you in thinking about any conversation that you're having, whether it's on social media off of social media, it doesn't matter. But if you are on social media, she's going to give you some nuggets that you can grab and run away with and some of her scripts that work really well. So if you are going to be posting or you are going to be sending DMs, let's make sure you're getting a return on that investment for that time that you're putting in. (laughs) Okay. So if that is you, this episode is going to be solid gold for you. If you are not on social media, like me, like a lot of my other clients, the other group of clients that I work with don't want to be on social media at all. I don't want you to tune out on this episode. I still want you to listen. It's going to be really, really valuable for you to listen to how Megan approaches conversations with anyone, whether it is on social media or not, and how she tracks them. This episode is all about the tracking, my friend. She's going to cover the methods for actually generating new leads and conversations, her system for talking to 10 people each day, Monday through Friday, how she does that in just 30 minutes each day, and then what to track in those conversations so that you can nurture the relationships over time, you can convert more clients, and perhaps even more importantly, you can create referral partnerships. So I just want to like circle back on that because inside the Profitable Nutritionist program where she did this workshop recently, it was all about how to use the system for creating referral partnerships with other practitioners or other influencers, other people that are already in front of your audience. So I'm going to make a plug here. First of all, listen to this episode. It's great. Second of all, follow Megan, go find her. She gives you all of her contact information at the end of the episode. So if you like what you hear, go follow Megan. She's incredible. And thirdly, you got to join the Profitable Nutritionist program because you get her full workshop on organic marketing and lead tracking for getting referral partnerships and making really lucrative referral relationships. As soon as you join the program, you have it in your bonuses library. So these are just, I guess what I wanted to say in this intro was these are the types of workshops that we do in the program ongoing. These are the types of conversations we're having. And that is why 
my clients in there are getting such great results because you are getting different strategies and different systems for putting them into use so that you can build the dream business that you want to have. If you don't want to be on social media, you don't have to. If you do, we want to make sure that it's profitable for you and you're getting a return on that investment. So just know no stone is left unturned in the program. We would love to have you in there. Go to theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join for all of the details and link to join. When you are getting this episode, the doors are currently open until September 18th. We open the doors just a few times per year. So if you're listening in real time and you're Johnny on the spot with this episode, that is great news for you. Head over to theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join and go join immediately before the doors close. You have access to all of this goodness on a weekly basis. We do coaching calls like this that you are going to hear from Megan today. Also, if you are listening in the future and that enrollment date has passed, all is not lost for you, my friend, don't worry. Head to that same page, theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join, and you will always see the dates of the next enrollment period that are listed at the top of the page so you can get on the wait list and not miss the next enrollment. We would love to see you in there. All right, without further ado, here is Megan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of the Profitable Nutritionist Podcast. As you might notice by the audio, I am not the phenomenal Andrea Nordling. My name is Megan Wing, and I'm doing a special segment of this podcast all about a simple system that you can put in place to start managing leads. And Andrea and I met at a business mastermind years ago, and we've both been in each other's worlds. And I am just so excited to be on here and share with you about a simple system that I've been using since 2021 to help me manage leads and bring in people organically to my offer, which means if you don't know what organic marketing means, it just means without having to pay for ads. So without further ado, let me get into the simple system that I have for you that can help you manage leads. Now, you first and foremost might be thinking, okay, why do I need to be managing leads? What even is managing leads? So I'm going to go over that definition really quick. And then I'm going to talk to you about different forms of communication that I would love for you after you listen to this podcast to start tracking right away. And then I'm also going to talk to the importance of utilizing the outreach that you're doing to create relationships that last beyond a business and client relationship. So first and foremost, what is managing leads? When I'm thinking about running any business, you have people that are coming in that are potential clients constantly. You've got people that might be seeing you on a blog post. You might be seeing people, people might listen to your podcast. They might see you on social media. When we're thinking about all of these people coming in, I define a potential client as a lead. So it just means someone who is a good fit for your business potentially. And so what we do is we've got that one to many or just that big marketing, which would be the podcast, the blog, the social media marketing, email list, all of those things are the at the big top of what we call a sales funnel. So we've got the one to many marketing at the top of your sales funnel. And then what happens is we want people to buy from seeing that marketing. What we've seen in 2024 is a lot of trends that are going towards going a little bit deeper than people just seeing a one-to-many piece of your marketing. And that one-to-many marketing that you are putting out into the world, giving that value, which is incredible, that is what's nicknamed billboard marketing. So it's really good to have that billboard marketing out in place in the world for people to see a little bit about you. However, we as service-based business owners want to get people at that next level. And we want to create more of a personal relationship and a personal trust with the people that are the potential clients. And if you think about it, if your service is something that is a higher ticket offer, how many times have you bought something that's higher ticket just by seeing a billboard? Unless it's a dire need, usually that is not the case. So typically what we need to do is we need to provide an additional layer of communication. We need to actually be talking to people so that they can convert so we can serve them as a client. Now, what that next level of marketing is called is one-to-one marketing or interactive marketing. This is where you're having conversations in, wait for it, the DMs. Now, 
I know a lot of people have a lot of thoughts about having conversations with people in DMs. Let me tell you why this piece of lead management is something that is critical to businesses, not just because it's the kind of business you want to have, but it's also because that is the style of marketing that's performing really well as of this year and the trends that we're seeing. So within that interactive marketing, when you're having conversations with people, what happens is you are able to build a relationship. You're able to get to know someone on a closer level. And if you have an offer that is something that's higher ticket, a lot less people we found, what the trend is showing, is that they're not just buying from seeing an ad. They're not always just buying from the email list. They might be, but a lot of people right now want to see that you're going to go the extra level, that you actually care about them and want to get to know them because there are so many things that they could choose from. You want to stand out and you want to show them that you really care. That's what doing managing leads and having a system for that can do for you. It shows that you're willing to go to the next level, that you really care before somebody pays you. So I want you to think about two, I'm going to tell you two reasons why this is really important to start doing. The first reason is when we're thinking about the reason why this interactive marketing has really like become a big staple to 2024 marketing, and I, I'm certain into the future is the marketing that we're seeing right now now has artificial intelligence, which is a great invention. I love using ChatGPT as much as the next person. However, what we're seeing is a lot of the marketing that we were able to do that was billboard marketing that was bringing people in is now replicated by AI. So someone else who is a nutritionist might be having, there might be bots, there might be an AI person that can be replicating those things. And the algorithm, especially if we're thinking about for social media, is designed to be social. That's why it's called social media. So a lot of times what I see people doing is they neglect having conversations with people. And let's say you're on the social media platform, Instagram, you could get flagged as a, as a bot if you don't interact and the algorithm will actually show your post to less people. Not ideal. So, and I know that Andrea does her business without social media. A lot of my clients grow business with social media. So that's something that's important to just keep in mind, specifically if you do market on social media, it's really important to do. Now, within other forms of marketing, if you're thinking about somebody who is a potential lead, someone who is a potential client that might want to work with you, what happens is they opt in. Let's say they, they start following you. They start maybe like engaging with some of your posts. They join your email list, whatever they're doing. I want you to imagine that your virtual storefront for your business is like a physical storefront. So when I walk into a physical store, what happens is I'm usually greeted by somebody, whether it be in a restaurant, I'm greeted by the hostess. And they're like, hey, how many people on your party would you like to sit down? Here or here's the wait. A lot of times we forget that just because we're a virtual business, that we forget the rules of physical storefronts. So for you all, I want you to think about like what it would be like if you walked into a store and you guys might have gone into some stores like that where just someone just doesn't talk to you. They're just kind of sitting there, chilling, not engaging with you at all. It provides the person who is a potential buyer, a potential customer with a really negative experience. It doesn't seem welcoming. It doesn't seem like they are interested in you. It's definitely happened for me before. And I'm a lot less likely to buy. That is why we want to be incorporating what's called interactive marketing. In I would recommend incorpor incorporating it within your business marketing strategy. Now, one of the things that I've seen is when you're thinking about talking to people, we're going to talk all about the last piece is going to be all about how to have really organic conversations, things that feel genuine, something that feels authentic, because I know that many of you guys, especially because you are marked as a business owner, especially if you're on social media platforms and Google, you might be getting spam messages with people that are trying to sell you right away. It's like, hi, nice to meet you by myself. Hi, nice to meet you by myself. 
that is not the approach that I would recommend. Other people do it and that's fine. That is not the approach I would recommend when we're thinking about managing leads and creating a system for that. You want to be building organic, authentic relationships with the people that are in your audience because that's the way that they're going to be buying. Now, you can play the odds. You can just say, hey, buy, 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 buy to anyone that follows you. But I think that it provides, if you do get clients from that approach, I would assume that they might not be the best fit clients for you. If you're selling to everybody and anybody and don't have a prior relationship, whoever is buying might be a little less than ideal. Let's just say. I also think that I just enjoy getting to know people and I don't want people to feel like I don't care about them until they pay me. So that's just kind of like the way that I like to think about my business and one of the reasons why I think you want to start incorporating this as well. So within your business, one of the things I've seen, if you are maybe don't have a system for managing leads, what happens is we seek inconsistencies with your business. Now, most businesses, they're going to go up and down, especially if you are launching and things like that. You're not necessarily going to see the consistent revenue like you would with a nine to five. Of course, that's why we started these businesses. However, the consistency issues that I've seen, if you don't manage your leads, look like larger waves in your business than you really need. So first and foremost, when you're seeing inconsistencies, a lot of times it's because we think that people, if we over deliver, if we do an amazing job for people, then of course, naturally, they're going to resign. And a lot of times that is not the case. That's what we call a single purchase customer. Somebody who is going in and they buy from you once and that's great, but maybe they don't renew. Maybe because they got phenomenal results and they aren't renewing with you. If their current needs are met, that's not a problem for them. That means that you've done a phenomenal job providing your service. However, if you are expecting them to rebuy and they don't, that provides an income inconsistency that you don't need. Another thing is, is when we experience some success, let's say you get featured on a podcast or you get an article that's published, or maybe you just do a presentation for a local group and a lot of clients come in, we can feel like that is the norm, the norm for our business. For instance, when I first started my business, I, um, of course, I'm now a business coach. Um, I help other solopreneurs start businesses. And within my first business I started, it was a general life coaching business, but I thought I was going to niche to children. And I did that because I used to be an elementary school teacher. And I thought, this is going to be great. I'm going to coach the children. And it was during COVID. So I started my business in 2020. And within that time, I got all, it was, I started my business right as the school year started. And I got 17 consults right off the bat because people knew me. I was involved in the teaching union. I also was a like a pretty big teacher at my school and other schools. So the second I posted about it, people started flocking in, which was a beautiful thing. And then I thought if I didn't get 17 consults every month after that, that I was failing. That is not always, having waves in your business is typical, but if you've got expectations set that like, okay, I'm going to do this one thing, one thing, and it's just going to stay forever. That is not the case. When you have some business success, it's a wonderful thing, but we always want to continue to try and revamp your strategy. We always want to try new systems. Like even though my business is six figure systems and I've been using these, I tweak the systems that I do all the time just to make sure I don't experience inconsistency. The other thing that's the biggest piece is I know that you are probably doing a phenomenal job providing content and providing resources for your community. There are two pieces to managing leads. When we're thinking about managing leads, there's nurturing your current audience, and then there's generating new leads. So there's nurturing leads and there's generating leads. I see a lot of service providers doing a phenomenal job with the nurturing of their current people. They love them. They're like, let me give you all these resources. And they don't focus on generating new leads. So what happens, let's say you have, keep the numbers simple, a thousand followers and you don't get any new followers and you've got like, say 500 people on your email list. If you're not generating new people coming in, you will have a situation where your business is going to be doing great. All these people are opting in. And then everyone that has wanted to at the time opt in, 
will have opted in. So you'll have all these people that have opted in, which is great, but the rest of the people aren't coming in. So what you want to do is you always want to be generating new leads, bringing in new people that could be potential customers. Now, if these are the inconsistency problems, creating single purchase customers, setting missed expectations, and not having enough new people coming in, the solution that you want to be thinking about is nurturing your current audience and generating new people to replenish your audience. So you want to have a process and what I call a system, obviously like my business is six figure systems. So it's all about systems, but within your business, you want to have a system to talk to your people. Even if you just do this because the algorithm, if you post and ghost, the algorithm is going to block you. That's fine too. But you want to have a way that you can do this. Talk to your audience that isn't exhausting. You want to have a way that is really easy to do, something that is a routine that you can talk to people and leave. So the system that I want to offer to you is taking 30 minutes a day at the beginning of a day and just talking to 10 people. Not crazy, right? Just talking to 10 humans. We're going to talk about which humans to talk to, but that's the first thing you want to do. So you want to talk to 10 people. Then... I like to set up 30 minutes at the end of the day to reach back out if people responded. That's it. So 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening. That equates to five hours a week, which you can always, I tell my clients, like you can adopt my system completely. You can adapt it. You can abandon it and start something new. Any of those options are fine. But if you do that, just talk to 10 people a day and you do that just every weekday, Monday through Friday, what will happen is you start to have all of these conversations and that's 2,500. If you were to just do it through a calendar year, that's 2,500 conversations per year. Now, those conversations, not everyone is going to convert. Not everyone's going to be a good fit for you. However, if you were to just convert 2% of those people, just 2%, guys, that in your offer is 2K, let's say 2%, 2K, you would have an 104K business within your structured timeline. So when people are like, is it like, do I want to do something like this? I would offer that you could be putting potentially six figures, just leaving it on the table if you don't start interacting with people. Again, I'm hard selling you because I just know it's going to work for you. It's worked for every single one of my clients. It's worked for me. And I want to help you to reach more people. The world needs more nutritionists. So within this, what we need to do is we need to figure out who to talk to and how in a way that feels authentic and genuine and not creepy. And so the first thing that you want to do is when you're thinking about generating, or let's talk about nurturing leads first. When you're thinking about nurturing your current leads, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're having conversations with people. You already have people that are either following you. They might be on your blog, subscribe. They might be on any other form of social media like LinkedIn. They've connected with you. They might be on your email list. What I would recommend is getting to know those humans on a one-to-one level. So I'm going to give you an example of how I nurture and have conversations with my current audience within social media. Instagram is my favorite. Come and hang out with me over there. I'll ask um, Andrew to put the link to my socials in the show notes. But for me, every time a new follower follows me, I have a pre-recorded video ready to send. It's awesome. And actually at this point, because I want to make sure I'm keeping that one-on-one connection, but my business has grown significantly. So I actually have a VA that automates and sends those to people. So there are three options that I would like for you to think about when you're trying to have a conversation with somebody. Here are the three that I use. Feel free to take it and use it. One of three options that I have my VA send or you could send would be, hi, thanks for following me. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm Megan. I'm the founder of Six Figure Systems. I love talking to other entrepreneurs about how they want to grow their business make more income and impact in less time, follow me for more. So that's the first one that I send to people. The second one that I send to people is I could say, I want to ask them what's called a closed question. 
So as you are talking to people, I know it sounds crazy, but it, you do this naturally. Like if I were to meet you in person and I'd be like, hey, nice to meet you. Tell me about your business. You would have a very natural way of having conversations with people. So for you, what you want to do is you want to then have what's called a closed question that you talk to people about. So closed questions have a very simple answer. Yes, no, a number, a very simple answer that requires minimal thought. Because the issue I find with many people is they will start off a conversation with somebody and they'll be like, tell me about your whole business. And that's a lot. That's a lot to ask somebody that you've just met. You want to get a smaller closed-ended question. So the first option for the video that I send people is open-ended. I say, hey, reach out. Let me know if you need anything. The second video that I send asks the closed question, how many years have you been in business? Super simple, right? But it gets the conversation going. Then the third video that I send to people is, hey, who do you help with your business? Again, very simple. It's a very simple question. Now, people might be like, you could just look at my page, but it's still the same three messages. If you follow me right now, you will probably get this message and it's going to help you to build that relationship organically with people. So that's the first thing that I do is I start the relationship with people who are currently in my audience and lots of people won't respond, but some will. So what you want to do from there is you want to have a conversation with people. You want to start with those closed questions and then you want to ask them more open ended questions like just normally. Now, one of the things that I think is really important is when you're having a conversation with people, don't make it feel like an interrogation. Make it feel something that like, like, again, my favorite analogy I tell my clients is pretend like someone is sitting across from you. What would you naturally say? So if you go and make it like an interrogation, here's how it will sound. If somebody, if you're like, how many years have you been in business? And they say, I've been in business for four years. I'm like, amazing. Who do you help? Like, I'm not giving them anything back. It doesn't feel like a real relationship. It just kind of feels like I'm pushing this on them. Not ideal. So what you want to do is you want to build this organic relationship with them. And you want to be doing what I call shared vulnerability. You want to be providing insights and information about yourself, too. So it's like if they're like, I've been in business four years, I would say, amazing. I've been in business for five years. I started my business in the pandemic. I actually thought I was going to start helping kids at first. And now it's transitioned in a crazy whirlwind to actually helping business owners create systems. What about you? Do you see how it's just a genuine conversation, genuine connection? So what happens there is we go from there are different, and I did not make this word up, I promise. There are different touch points. Yes, that sounds gross. This is not my words. These are the typical business vernacular. So there are different touch points that you're going to have within your conversations with people. There are going to be soft touch points, which again, ew, but it's something that is the closed questions, basic, just hey, get to know you, talking to you. And then you want to take them from a soft touch to, a, I call it a medium touch point. I don't know if there's a technical term, but this medium touch points are where then you ask them a little bit more about their business. And you could say something like, hey, I'm going to do a webinar or I'm doing another podcast and I am trying to pull my audience to feel like, to see which they, what kind of topics they would like. I know marketing is a hot topic, managing leads is a hot topic, sales and planning. Of those four things, is there something that you want to really focus on in quarter three? Do you see how clear it is? Do you see how like focused it is, how I'm thinking about them? It's all in service, but I am asking a more open-ended question and I'm providing a resource. So when you're thinking about that, you can also start to give some free resources. If you don't have anything that's like a template, I would just send people my posts and be like, hey, if you are trying to bring in some more people, I just wrote a post about the three videos to send to new audience followers. Check this out. And then ask a follow-up question. The key is always asking questions, keeping the door open, just building these relationships. The last thing that you want to do, and this is only when it feels really good to you, if you've been talking back and forth with someone and you're like, as a nutritionist, I could absolutely help you with my eyes closed. 
what you want to do then is you want to give them an opportunity to join you. Now, many of my clients, we do consults. You might have people just like, here's a link to sign up. But that is the only time that you ever go for a hard sell in a DM. Notice that that, and that usually happens over multiple conversations, a longer period of time. And that delayed relationship building is usually what it takes people to buy. So you want to be thinking about, okay, how can I build this relationship and just give them a chance to opt into working with you? Not in a weird way, but like it's your duty as a service provider to make sure that they know that they can work with you and asking them can feel odd, but it isn't. I mean, you're, that's your job. So when you were thinking about that, you don't just want to say here, it's like after we've been talking for like a week, then you go in you're like, book a consult or else I'm never going to talk to you again. Cause that is sad. You don't want to be like, maybe it's just not the right time for somebody. Maybe they just want, they do want to work with you. Just not right then. So what I typically do is I will do this typically after I do a webinar or something like that. And anyone who registered for the webinar, I'll say, hey, not sure if you're thinking about joining my mastermind, but enrollment closes on Sunday. I would love to have you in there. And here's a link to book a call. I want to make sure that you get this as you transition to some from summer to fall. There's a lot of changes happening. And I want you to know I'm here to support you. That if not, there's no pressure. That's totally fine. Otherwise, I'll be checking in with you as time goes on. So what you want to do is you want to keep it casual and then you go back to the soft touch. You talk to them more about like maybe they went on a vacation that their business was able to pay for. You want to keep the conversation related to your business. You don't want to just be like, what's your favorite color? Here's my offer, obviously. But like sometimes it needs to be said. So you want to be talking to them about nutrition or whatever your business is. Then you want to be giving them value of things that you could help them with. And then you want to offer them a chance to opt in and you want to cycle back through. Now with my clients, they talk with a lot of people. Like their inboxes are filled with DMs. Like they're just having conversations all the time, which is so fun. And you want to be kind. And I have ADHD, so I would forget people. So if I was talking with somebody, what would happen is tragically, I would go in, have the best conversation, and either things would fizzle out, they wouldn't respond for a little bit, and they would be like, hey, I want to join that webinar. And I would forget everything about them. Especially if you're networking in person, this is really, really important. I have a tracker that I have my clients use, and it's literally just to take notes on humans that you just don't want to forget. You want to be like a responsible, kind human being, and you don't want to forget critical information about someone that they've shared with you. So I'd highly recommend starting that. Now, that's the nurturing leads, half of managing leads system that I have. And within the weekly system, I usually, it depends on your audience. Most people who are listening to this right now, you might have crickets in your DMs. So you might not have people that you can add to that list right away. So when you get your list built up of all these people who are having conversations with you, I typically talk for two or three days of the week. I will nurture my audience And then I'll spend the other two days doing the other half of the managing lead system, which is outreach and generating new leads. So if you have no one in your audience yet, that's totally fine. And no one's like messaging you about things. You got to start generating some new leads. You got to start meeting new people. The way that I like to do that is I like to have conversations and I think about places that I already am a part of. So the four places I want you to think about is like, especially if you have a very small audience, you've got to find new places, new ways to meet new people. So what I like to do is I like to think about, okay, what are common interests I have? Do do we have a similarity for education or certification? Are they a part of a group I'm in or are they local? So for common interests, for me, I used to teach yoga. I was like, I had like five jobs at one point as a teacher, but One of the things that I did is I taught yoga at a place called Core Power Yoga. And as I taught there, I found that I could connect with people who also were, they were already investing in their health. I knew that. And I also knew that. So I started to build relationships there when I was doing outreach to cold people. And I would find people and I'd be like, hey, I think we both go to Core Power Yoga. It's like, sorry for creeping, but I think we both follow Core Power. Do you go in the morning classes or evening classes? And just starting the conversation from there. And I say like, hey, I 
was looking on for power. I did see that we both have a common connection. Let's start to build a relationship. Now, people might not respond or things like that, and that's totally fine, but that's a good way to just have a common interest to build more people. The next piece is your education or certification. So for me, I got certified as a life coach by the Life Coach School. I know there are a lot of life coaches that also follow the Life Coach School. So if I had zero people in my audience, I would go to the Life Coach School and I would say, hey, I saw that we both follow the Life Coach School. I got certified back in 2021. Are you certified by Life Coach School or do you just follow them? And start to build conversations like that there. The other place you can find new people to generate leads with could be groups that you're a part of. So for me, I'm a part of this group called Raleigh Women in Marketing, and I'm actually doing a presentation with them next week. And I would connect with other people that my problem solves. So you can think about, okay, these are people who are, are marketers. I could talk to them about the other pieces of the business that could be marketing. So the pieces I coach people with are marketing, managing leads, selling, and planning. They might need some planning help. They've got the marketing down, but I can help them with planning and create systems around finances or things like that. So that's another way that you can connect with people. The last but not least is local. So I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Any other Raleigh people, feel free to reach out. It's the best. And there's a restaurant club called Offline Raleigh Durham. So I can find people and be like, hey, I think we both follow offline. Just saying, are you in the offline club too? It's like a restaurant club. So these are the kind of things that I would do. And there are two different kinds of generating lead and outreach that you can do. There's business to business, B2B, and there's business to, I think, consumer, B2C. So this would be if you need to generate direct leads that people that could be a good fit for you, that would be what I would recommend with the common interest, education or certification groups and or local. However, there also might be people that are outside of the business consumer B2C, and those would be business to business. So that's where if you want to become a referral partner with somebody, if you're thinking about referral or um, someone that you can collaborate with. So you want to think about, okay, who am I a good niche adjacent fit for? And how can I reach out to those people? So when you're generating leads in a business to consumer conversation, you want to be doing those soft touch points, selling casual, telling them how you found them, your connection, asking a basic question. However, if you're doing business to business, you can do more of a medium touch point and you can be like, hey, I'm a new, for you guys, one of the things that I've told other clients who have had that are dietitians and nutritionists, I say, go to gyms. You can also talk to like corporations. They might want to include some perks or benefits for their employees. You can say, hey, I am a nutritionist. Would you like to meet up and we can talk about how we can collaborate? I would love to support your community. Like if you're doing something for a gym, you could also find other people through corporations and things like that just by talking to your friends and saying, hey, does anybody know who has some corporate perks? I would love to get into the corporation space and I would love to help more people in that way. But that is how you manage leads. And so you spend two days generating new leads or depending on the size of your audience, two days generating, three days nurturing, vice versa. And if you're just starting out, it's probably going to be a lot, five days of outreach to new people, all generating new leads. But as time goes on, you're going to build this robust, amazing audience of people who are phenomenal that you can let know if you're doing a certain special, if you've got ideas for people. And for me, it has worked insanely well. I think that 75, it was something like 77% of all my consults but for the past three years have all come from this organic traffic. And I've made half a million dollars within the course of my business. So I would say that like 75 to 80% of my clients come and have come from over the 125 people I've helped have come from having this connection point. So I would say it's definitely worth your while. It is one of the many things that have worked. It's worked for every single one of my clients because you just get to know new people. And if you think about every person knowing like 300 people, like a wedding full of people, you want to be thinking about that as a way to support new people. There are so many people that could use your help and they are right there. They're available for you. 
So thank you, Andrea, for having me on. I hope this was helpful when you're thinking about getting all these people brought in and serving even more people with your business. So with that being said, I am Megan, like I mentioned, Megan Wing. My business is Six Figure Systems. On the gram, if you want to find me, it's Megan Wing Coaching. At least for now, I am getting married within the year, so it might be changing soon. And my email is also meganwingcoaching at gmail.com. And last but not least, my website is meganwingcoaching.com. Pretty simple. And yeah, Facebook, I'm on there too, Megan Wing, Megan Ann Wing, I think it is. And I'm on LinkedIn as well. So thank you, Andrea, for having me. Feel free to connect. You'll get one of my fun new follower videos if you connect with me on Instagram. And I cannot wait to hear how this worked for you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And I'll hopefully be talking with you soon. Big news. The Profitable Nutritionist program is currently open for enrollment until September 18th. Here's the big news. This is the final time that you can join the program and get lifetime access to all the program components, including live coaching every single week. That's right. You, me, talking about your business. The next time we open enrollment, you are going to pay for continued access to the program after your initial 12 months. But when you join by September 18th at midnight, you are grandfathered in with lifetime access to the entire program. Again, this is the final enrollment where we will be offering lifetime access. So if you want in on that, and I think you do, go to theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join right now and get signed up.